George Washington was still president during the time that the plan for the city was conceived. Washington had commissioned Major Pierre Charles L'Enfant to work out the initial street design. L'Enfant had come from France with the Marquis de Lafayette and served with Washington during the Revolutionary War as one of his officers. He was known as a temperamental Frenchman, sometimes difficult, if not impossible, to work with. He, uh, as I understand it, felt very strongly about the plan that he developed for the street layout of the city. So much so that when minor changes were suggested, um, he, he became irate. Oh, absolutely not. No changes. These no changes. But nonetheless, if you look at his original plan, which is, of course, available, you can see maps, uh, his map, of, uh, and it is very similar to the current layout of the city. L'Enfant insisted his original design be followed to the letter, something that would later lead to his dismissal from the project. Yet even so, one Masonic author writes that the early architects responsible for individual buildings did attempt with considerable success to honor L'Enfant's master plan. He goes on to call it an arcane schema to be established with the aid of interested Masons. Yet in the planning stages, L'Enfant was particularly at odds with Thomas Jefferson. These guys had a terrible, uh, they, they just did not get along. Jefferson, of course, was a very important part of, of the designing of, of Washington, D.C. Jefferson himself, along with Benjamin Franklin, was said to be deeply involved in astronomy. Jefferson spent five years as the American ambassador to France. When he returned, he brought with him the influence of European architecture. Along with Washington, Jefferson, and L'Enfant was Andrew Ellicott, the surveyor for the city, and Benjamin Banneker, his assistant. Banneker has been called the man who loved the stars. He was a freeborn African American who published a famous almanac on astronomy. His influence on the design of Washington, D.C. has been greatly disputed. Some believe that when Pierre L'Enfant was fired from the project, he took his designs with him. Good day, sir. L'Enfant. And that Benjamin Banneker was able to recreate the plan from his photographic memory later on. Others argue that copies of L'Enfant's design were still available and that the unfinished elements were then added by the surveyor, Andrew Ellicott, a little-known figure who some believe was a Freemason. While mysteries abound about the specifics, one thing all of the designers and surveyors seemed to have in common was an interest in the esoteric elements that would compose Washington, D.C. Ultimately, when the final design was presented, George Washington chose to call it the L'Enfant Plan. Perhaps the most influential researcher into the L'Enfant Plan and the mysterious arcane elements of Washington, D.C. has been David Ovison, who wrote the book, The Secret Architecture of Our Nation's Capital. In his book, Ovison argues that the real mystery of Washington, D.C. is to be found in Federal Triangle. What Ovison felt was that that Federal Triangle was basically reflected from the stars. Ovison's research, more than any other, confirms the idea that Washington, D.C. was built according to hermetic principles, as above, so below. It was laid out to reflect what was going on in the stars, where you had a right-angled triangle surrounding the constellation of Virgo. The right-angled triangle surrounding Virgo is partly reflected in the layout of Federal Triangle and symbolizes the Pythagorean theorem. The theorem simply states that the base of a right triangle squared and the perpendicular side of a right triangle squared 
are equal to the third side, known as the hypotenuse. This theorem is said to be of unique and mysterious importance in Freemasonry. It's interesting that in the, uh, in the third degree of Masonry, the Master Mason candidate is given several lectures. And one of the lectures he is told to meditate upon the 47th problem of, Eu of Euclid, which is also the 47th theorem of Pythagoras. And it's also known as the Pythagorean theorem which is that the, the sum of the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides in a right triangle. And of course, everybody goes, huh? You know, what's that got to do with anything? But it sounds really impressive. And of course, it's never explained. You have to go and look it up. You have to take the initiative and go into a Masonic library or a Scottish Rite library. Fortunately, there was a huge one in Milwaukee where I lived. And then you learn what they're being, what they're being told. What they're being told is that, in, again, symbols have different levels of meaning. And, um, for example, the upright part of a right triangle symbolizes veil. The horizontal part of the right triangle symbolizes the female, who is, of course, prostrate and passive. And the hypotenuse, which connects the two, that symbolizes the divine child. That, the, that Baal and the goddess create. Baal and Ashtarte, Isis and Osiris, pick the name, they're all the same thing. They're trying to evoke the trinity, the pagan trinity of Baal or Osiris and Isis and Horus. The squared elements of this Pythagorean trinity resemble the letter Y. In his book, David Ovison suggests that Washington, D.C. was intentionally placed at the split of the Potomac and Eastern Rivers to symbolize this Pythagorean Y. It was George Washington who outlined the 10 square mile parameter for the city according to the cardinal directions. But Ovison's principal theory is that in L'Enfant's original plan, the White House, Washington Monument, and Capitol Building were designed in a right triangle according to a star pattern above, where three stars surround the constellation Virgo, forming a stellar triangle. According to Ovison, the federal triangle actually exists within this greater triangle, but with the same purpose. This hermetic symbolism, above and below, is intended to draw upon the spiritual energies associated with Virgo. But for what purpose? Could it be that as Isis brings forth Horus, so the energies of the Virgin are intended to bring forth the Divine Child? Ovison refers to Pennsylvania Avenue as the spiritual center of Washington, D.C partly because it forms a direct line between the Capitol Building and the White House, but also because Pennsylvania Avenue is the hypotenuse of the Federal Triangle and symbolizes the divine offspring of the Pagan Trinity. The Divine Child is supposed to be the, for lack of a better word, the New Age Messiah. He's supposed to be the product of the coming together of the cosmic feminine forces and the cosmic masculine forces to produce a synergy. This synergy of the masculine and feminine is said to be a key understanding of all occult doctrine. These are the positive and negative, like the black and white imagery of yin and yang. Sir Francis Bacon held to these ideas through the gods Apollo and Athena. Bacon took his mystical views from the teachings of Kabbalah. You know, in Kabbalah, it's taught that a man and a woman is a complete vessel, and that's the only way for the holy light to be held entirely. This concept of completion is further defined by the esoteric concept of alchemy. In Arabic, the term for chemistry is alchemia. In the European languages, that becomes alchemy, 
but it's an Arabic term that simply means the chemistry, al, the, chemia, chemistry. Alchemy is like divine chemistry. You could use that as a term. It's about transformation. It's about transformation of the lower self to the higher self. Of some use the symbolic expression of lead to gold. This divine chemistry is sometimes called the chemical marriage or wedding. In the 17th century, the Rosicrucian order put forth a document called the chemical wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz. A Rosicrucian website explains the purpose of the tale, saying that alchemy is based on the view that man, as a result of the loss of his original Adamic state, is divided within himself. He regains his integral nature only when the two powers are again reconciled with one another. And, and so, just as there was an Adam and Eve, there's a husband and a wife, there's a man and a woman, because it's, it's two different qualities, positive and negative, and together they make the whole. Throughout Washington, D.C., the alchemic and Pythagorean principle of the male and female seems to be repeated again and again. Notice here the James Buchanan Monument, with a male figure to one side and a female to the other, while President Buchanan, who also happened to be a Freemason, is placed in between them, where the perfected man would be. But perhaps the clearest single representation of this Pythagorean alchemical formula is the Boy Scout Memorial found on 15th Street between E Street and Constitution Avenue. The Boy Scouts of America were founded by a Freemason named Daniel Carter Beard. And so it seems only fitting that the Boy Scout Memorial would be a kind of American Trinity where the Boy Scout himself stands in the place of the divine offspring. Yet esoterics argue that this divine offspring cannot come forth without help from above. Primary sources indicate as Jefferson and other or those who were involved with architecture, that you lined up the heavens with whatever you were creating, have it built at a certain time, and that would pour, pull the spiritual energies and, the, and powers into that location. The idea of receiving help from heavenly powers was the ancient practice of alchemists, Rosicrucians, and those in pursuit of secret knowledge. But on Pennsylvania Avenue, the General Gordon Meade statue seems to clearly capture this idea. Meade was the Union General who defeated Robert E. Lee at the famous Battle of Gettysburg, sometimes called the bloodiest and most decisive battle of the Civil War. One that ultimately decided that the American states would remain united. Notice the general standing in the forward position with a golden standard of victory above his head. While behind him are a series of mythical god and goddess looking figures as if they might be powers and principalities from the heavenlies. In total, 